Well, Megan Alexander has traveled to the North Pole, the one in Alaska, of course. She's also visited places like Frostburg, which, by the way, is in Maryland. Now, they may be on opposite sides of the country, yet these small towns and many more like them perfectly capture the magic of Christmas. Megan Alexander is an Emmy-nominated host, national correspondent for Inside Edition, best-selling author, and sports commentator. She's also the host and executive producer of the holiday travel show, Small Town Christmas. Her latest book, The Magic of a Small Town Christmas, takes readers on a journey to the imaginary town of Heartbeat Falls, showcasing the sweet traditions that small towns offer during the holidays. Well, Megan Alexander's joining us now via Skype. And Megan, we welcome you back to the program. Jerry, Merry Christmas. Good to see you. Thank you. And you. We need to ask you right off the top, did you grow up in a small town? I did. I grew up in Edmonds, which is about 45 minutes outside of Seattle, Washington, and a very magical small town called Leavenworth. It's a couple more hours towards eastern Washington. And my family has always loved to travel during the holidays. And now, me and my family, we're in Franklin, which is a small town outside of Nashville. Oh, such a pretty small town outside Nashville. <laughs> Talk a little bit about what a small town, what in, about a small town captures that magic of Christmas. Yeah, you know, Terry, for me, half the fun of putting together this show is the first phone call that I make <laughs> when I'm still, you know, doing my research on which towns we should feature. And for season two, as I was gathering info on my, on my new four small towns, it's so fun to place that first phone call, usually to the mayor or to someone in the tourism department. And they immediately say, oh, you've got to call Joe and his tree farm. How about Sherry and her bakery? Right, Terry? Everybody knows everybody. They're all each other's fans. They know they need each other because of uh, small businesses needing to be supported. And I'm inspired, Terry, that so many of these holiday events are volunteer driven. People put on these events for free because they love it and they want to be a part of something in their community. Well, you have been to many small towns in your role as a TV host, but what are some of the unique traditions that you've seen in your job? Yeah, two really neat ones this year, Terry, that I think you and your viewers will appreciate. You know, my faith is very important to me, and I always love to go to a small town and see what the worship community is like. We feature Pigeon Forge, Tennessee in season two, and you may know this, I did not. Dolly Parton's Dollywood Amusement Park is the only amusement park in the world that has a full-time chaplain on site at the amusement park and a full-time chapel. So every Sunday, employees or guests of the amusement park can attend church service. We feature that. Uh, the chapel is named after the doctor that delivered Dolly Parton. I thought that was just really inspiring. And in North Pole, Alaska, Terry, you're never going to believe it. They have St. Nicholas Catholic Church, right? St. Nicholas Catholic <laughs> of course, Church. Of course, but of course. Of course, a <laughs> darling parish and the sweetest people, and I got to worship a bit with them. Oh, that's wonderful. What were some of your favorite Christmas traditions when you were growing up? Yeah, you know, for me, my parents just always made church a big part of our lives, whether it's Christmas Eve service and, and going to the candlelight service. Um, I do that with my kids now. Uh, downtown Franklin has a sweet little church that we go to and sing our Christmas carols. That's really important to me. And then a fun one that we've started the last couple of years, Terry, is we have a flashlight candy cane hunt in the backyard. We sprinkle candle ca candy canes all over. All the kids in the neighborhood and their friends come with flashlights and they try to find the most candy canes, sort of like an Easter egg hunt. So that's been really fun to do. What about food? Do you have any special foods that you've passed down in tradition to your children? Yeah, well, I, I tell you what, I need to get back into the kitchen after uh, <laughs> filming the show because all of the goodies are so delightful. In LJ, Georgia, a lady named Lisa Salmon taught me how to make her Aunt Bessie's caramel cake, and she gave us the recipe, which we post on the FTV website. So family recipes that are passed down. I love to go into towns and find out what it is for people. For me, growing up in Seattle, it was Nanaimo bars. If anybody's familiar with that, that's actually a Canadian treat. It's fudge and buttercream cream and everything good. Um, and my, my boys just love good old fashioned sugar cookies and, and um, snickerdoodles at Christmas. So we have Absolutely. those too. Well, let's get to one of the reasons why you haven't been in your kitchen lately. You've been writing. <laughs> you have a new book out. It's so charming. The Magic of a Small Town Christmas. It's brand new where you take readers to the fictional town of Heartbeat Falls. What do you want the takeaway to be for people who take this book and read it? 
Yeah, you know, Terry, as a mother of three little kids, I just want to contribute positive content to this world. That's really been motivating for me. A reason that I put on this show and that I wanted to write this book is that you can read it and watch it with your families. And when I travel to these towns, Terry, I come home and I want to tell my kids about it, what I saw, what I experienced. And I really, really realized I need to put it into their form. And what is that for little kids? Story time, reading to our kids at night. So we took some elements of all of the towns that we cover in season one and season two of Small Town Christmas. And I created the imaginary town of Heartbeat Falls. And it has all those sweet elements that we love, illustrated by the incredible heroine Nakata, who I have to give such credit to. Look at the beautiful picture of the church there. But my hope, Terry, is that parents will remind their kids that yes, Christmas is about shiny, beautiful objects and so much fun. And I love it too. But more importantly, it's about the friends and family that gather with us, gather with us around the table and that we get to experience uh, these moments with. And of course, our faith and Jesus' birth and keeping Jesus the reason for the season. So I'm still trying to do it for my kiddos and I'm hoping this can be a tool for other families as well. You know, one of the great things about a book is that it also initiates conversation. And so it really gives you an opportunity as you're enjoying it with your children to talk about some of the things that you've mentioned because there is a lot of other stuff, the lights, Santa, gingerbread, candy canes. So making sure that the real meaning of Christmas stays at the core of it all is really significant for us as believers. I completely agree, Terry. And our small towns, you know, they're doing something right because as I travel to all these different places and I tried to reflect this in the book, you know, church is still the center of so much activity in small towns. Um, they're overflowing with people. That's very apparent. And just the the um, thinking beyond yourself that you feel in a small town, that selflessness of let's talk about each other, let's encourage each other, let's show up for each other. I really want to try to pass that along and help parents and grandparents, you know, have those conversations, like you said, with their kids, like I'm trying to do myself. Well, to all of our viewers, I want them to know they can head to Heartbeat Falls in Megan's brand new children's story. It's called The Magic of a Small Town Christmas. It's available in stores nationwide. Megan, Merry Christmas to you and to your family. It's great to see you again. You too, Terry. Merry Christmas, everybody.